coach, Pat Dye, All-American guard at Georgia. Key people for the Tigers. Running back, Lionel James. Big little man. Big, big man, Bo Jackson. Georgia coach, Vince Dooley, played quarterback at Auburn. Key Georgia people today, quarterback John Lastinger. And All-American rover Terry Ho, coming off an ankle injury, but will play. NCAA College Football. This ABC Sports Exclusive is sponsored by Chevrolet. Official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Chevrolet and you taking charge. By Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. By U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Goodyear, makers of Arriva, the all-season radio. And ready to come into old Sanford Stadium that jam-packed the white-shirted Auburn Tigers. They only stumble on their schedule to a record of 8-1. They lost the second game to the Longhorns of Texas. The head coach, Pat Dye. But it took a 99-yard drive in the third and fourth quarter last week to get by Florida 10-9. The head coach, Vince Dooley. And hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Coach Frank Royal. Teams ranked third and fourth in the nation. The highest-ranked teams that are going to meet head-on, I guess, this whole season, at least in the regular season, Frank. And every cliche, every homily has already been said. It's just head-knocking time, I guess. Both teams are very physical. They'll line up and play toe-to-toe, -to -toe, jaw to jaw. And this reflects the personality of their coaches who believe in running the football, playing defense, and kicking the ball. They, they just don't have a very fancy... But when they have to, they can throw the football. But I want to mention that uh, this is a style of play that wins championships, particularly in this part of the country. Even in other parts of the country, when you look back at at Bud Wilkinson, Darrell Roy, Woody Hayes, and coaches like this. This was their stock and trade. They believe very definitely that you pass for show and you run for dough, and that means championship. Play field position football because both these teams have outstanding kickers. Running game plays a big part in field position. Each time these teams take the field, they'll try to make one first down, then another, then another. If you don't score, they punt the ball, back them up, and let their defense take over. Georgia's offensive front, about as good as anybody's, I think. Auburn's defensive front, also outstanding. That collision ought to be something. Georgia defense has four seniors, two of them made all Southeastern Conference. Surprisingly, Keith, they've run it for as much yards this year as they did with Herschel Walker in the past. But they're running up against a strong defensive front, three all Southeastern Conference players that know how to charge, know how to challenge, know how to be aggressive. Who wins in these cases? Usually it's the defense. So we will look for Georgia to open up maybe a little bit early on first down and throw more than they have in the past. I'm tired of talking. I am too. Let's get it on. <laughs> Let's play football. The South's oldest college football rivalry, Auburn and Georgia, coming up. I don't care how many times you've been there, when you come to a ball game like this, my goodness, there's something special about it. Every nerve in your body has to be quivering. It was back in 1971 when these two teams came into this ball game undefeated, both with records of 9 and 0. But they were not as highly ranked as these two teams are. The series records reflected there, going back to 1892 at Piedmont Park in Atlanta, Georgia. The biggest upset in this series had to be in 1942 when Auburn defeated Georgia 27-13 down in Columbus. That was the Georgia team that went on to the Rose Bowl. Frankie Sink with Charlie Trippi and that much. And they beat UCLA 9 to nothing. Georgia has won the toss. Auburn will receive as Georgia elects to take the football to start the second half of play. Now let's check in with our colleague Tim Brandt regarding the health of Terry Hogue. Keith, I talked to the trainer, I talked to Vince Dooley. He is wearing high top shoes, has that ankle tape. He warmed up and says it feels very good. He may not start, but he will play. He said the warm-ups were outstanding. He can't wait to get in this ball game. Jeff Cantrell had a big ball game last week against the Florida for Georgia and seemingly would have earned the starting spot. And I would expect that we'll see him out there. 
But at the same time, when you have a player the caliber of a Terry Hogue, he will play if he can walk in a ball game like this. The offensive picture for the two teams, you can see that they're both productive on the ground, especially so in the case of the Auburn Tigers. Sanford Stadium is stuck. They may very well have a, an all-time attendance record by the time they get everybody off the bridge and into the ballpark. Kevin Butler, who may turn out to be an important personality in this ball game before it is done today, just as the Auburn kicker, Alde Greco, may turn out to be an important personality. Two very fine kickers. The principal return man for Auburn is Brent Fullwood. They like him to have the football, but very seldom do you get a chance to run the ball back against Kevin Butler. Kick return, Fullwood is averaging 16 yards per return. Butler's kick is high, long, deep. There will be no return of this one. So one more time, Butler makes the opposition start at the 20, and it'll be Randy Campbell pulling the trigger. Bo Jackson will line up at right halfback at 226 pounds. Lionel James at left halfback at 170 pounds. And a freshman who was a dynamite performer last week with 219 yards, Tommy Agee. Chris Woods, wide receiver, 6 feet, 185. The ball is put on the 20 now, and here's the first snap of the ball game for the Tigers. Auburn in white. They play on grass, real grass, here in Athens. The ball goes to Bo Jackson for the line of scrimmage, and that'll do it. The offensive front for the Auburn Tigers, Ed West, the tight end, 6'1", 235. At tackle, Steve Wallace, 6'6", 265. David Jordan, 6'6", 260. At center, Yan Cowart, 6'2", 230. Jeff Lott, 6'3", 270. And Pat Arrington, 6'6", 260. They are pro size up front. Oh, We've got the Georgia defense for you in a moment. Second down and 10 Auburn from the 20. Out of the wishbone, Campbell bellies it down, goes outside the line of James, and James gets around the corner and gets the first down for Auburn, and that is a basic play out of the wishbone. Knox Culpepper made the tackle for the Georgia Bulldogs. The key block on the right of your screen, Bo Jackson, the leading ball carrier, also blocked. You can see that the pitch is the outside man as the Georgia end gets blocked. Watch it on the sideline right over here. Number 34 puts him on the ground. And uh, James goes for the first down, something Georgia did not want to happen. The Auburn back getting outside. From the 34, first down for Auburn. Campbell looking it over, seemingly going to a check off, gives it back to Jackson, and Jackson moves it close to the 39. Georgia's defense lines up this way. The big people up front are Calvin Ruff, Donald Chumbley, Mike Weaver, Kenneth Sims, and Freddie Gilbert. Linebackers are Knox, Cole Pepper, and Tommy Thurston. In the secondary, Darrell Jones, Tony Flack, Gary Crantrell, and uh, Charlie Dean. But Terry Hogue will be very obvious before the day is gone. Second down and six. Gives it to A.G. And A.G., a freshman out of Maplesville, Alabama, is across the 40 up to about the 41. Braddock. Penn State comes on in the final minute of that ball game up at uh, State College to beat Notre Dame by a score of 34 to 30. And TCU leading Texas 14 to 12 in the third quarter. It was 14 to 3 at halftime. Second-ranked Texas having all it wants with a horn throw. Third down, call it four from the 41, and Campbell back quickly. Just up the throw to James. Lionel James has it, and he's got a first down for Auburn up around their own 48. Knox Culpepper again making the tackle. Knox is the son of the man who played fullback a few years ago here at uh, the University of Georgia. Young Knox is a junior out of Atlanta. Young Knox Culpepper is the leading tackler, 111 plays so far this year, but all over the football field, making key tackles for the Georgia Bulldogs. The Auburn Tigers now starting at their 20 have moved out to successive first down. They have it now first down at their 48. 
And again, Campbell takes the long count, rides it down, goes outside. Lionel James hurtles over one man, cuts it back inside, and makes something out of nothing. It looked like the dogs were going to get him outside, but the little man cut it back inside, and finally it was Kenneth Sims that brought him down. These numbers reflect the ability of the Auburn running back. Jackson leads the Southeastern Conference, seven-yard average. James 6'3", 85-7. Georgia's defense will try to force Campbell to keep the ball on the quarterback option, not let the back get it. They have not been able to penetrate enough, however, at this point, Frank, to effect that. That's a good point. They want to get in that backfield if they can. Jackson is missed in the backfield and goes for a first down after the miss as he reaches the Georgia 40. Knox Culpepper, number 48, coming after him and missed him. Culpepper is going to shoot the gap, knowing that the sweep is coming, but he misses the Jackson in the backfield. As you'll see, Jackson is big and strong, weighs 228 pounds, runs the 60-yard dash, and 6.1 seconds. In fact, as fast as Herschel Walker as he beat him in a sprint last spring. And the Tigers are sitting on the Georgia 41st down. Testing the Bulldog defense right out of the starting block. First quarter of play. Fumble. Campbell dives, covers the ball. Randy Campbell is the fellow that you don't hear much about until you get into Auburn itself and talk to the coaches, and then they will tell you how prominent he is in how the whole thing works for the Tigers out of the wishbone. The wishbone offense is a decision-making offense on the option play, precision thinking by the quarterback. Very key man, the key man. After the fumble, it is second down, about 10, just outside the 40. Campbell bellies to the fullback, gives it to the fullback, and A.G. is rolled up at the line of scrimmage. And stepping in is Mike Weaver, the big middle guard, 280-pound junior out of Haines City, Florida. Last a yard on the carry. Last week, Tommy H., the fullback, had touchdown run of 61 yards and 44 yards right up the middle. Bill Lewis, defensive coordinator for Georgia, told me we are not going to let him dominate this game. We're going to close in and stop him if we possibly can. It is third down and six now, and Auburn breaks the bone. They'll come up with one remaining back. They've got the two halfbacks lined up in the wingback or flanker spot. He did the passing down on third and nine, but that doesn't always read fast. They throw swing it out on a screen to Bo Jackson, and Jackson fights his way down to about the 35, and there the Bulldogs get him and bring him down. So it'll be fourth down and five for Auburn. The strength of this Georgia defense is 11th in the nation right now. It's on wide plays. They play up and down the line, Seldom penetrate on long yardage. Difficult to run the screen against them. It'll be a 52-yard field goal try for Al Del Greco. 52 yards. The hold is good. The kick is up. No good. It hit it right at the corner. Just missed it from 52 yards. And so with 9.03, Georgia holds and gets the ball. Watch it, how close it was. Coming down now, beginning to drop, and nicks the corner and stays out. Georgia gets the ball for the first time. They get it at their own 35. Nothing conservative about Pat Dye's decision to try for a 52-yard field goal. In so doing, he gives Georgia the ball with the miss at the 35. Good field position. So let's see what the Bulldogs can do in their first defensive possession. Auburn moved it well until they got to the 35. John Lessinger takes the snap, keeps it. Gets it quickly in the air and overthrows the intended receiver, the fullback, very young. Here's a look at him. John Lastinger, 6'2", 190, senior from Valdosta. Keith Montgomery opens a tailback, 190-pound sophomore. Very young, the fullback. He started the season at tailback. He's a 210-pounder. Herman Archie is a big target at flanker, 6'5", 195. And Kevin Harris, the wide receiver, 6 feet, 195. And David McCluskey is now in at the I-back position for Georgia. He's a fresh big fellow, but they give it off to young, the fullback. 
And Barry runs it up to about the 39 to pick up four. Up front, the Bulldogs operate with Clarence K, 6'3", 235 at tight end. Winfred Hood at tackle, 260 pounds. James Brown at guard, 250 pounds. The center is Keith Johnson. He's a 270-pounder. 255 pounds for the right guard, Warren Gray. He's a puller and a good one. Guy McIntyre, 6'3", 260 at the other tackle. Georgia running at about 50% on the season in third down conversions. Now it's Sean Jackson and his tailback and going in motion. And they swing it out to Jackson and he goes right through his hands. You better cover it. It was almost a lateral. That was almost a lateral. It was a matter of a foot either way. They call it an incomplete forward pass and that brings in the punter for Georgia, Chip Andrews. Here's the pass. You can see that last thing is throwing the ball parallel to the line of scrimmage. The ball does go forward just enough to make it just enough to make it an incomplete pass instead of a bumper. Georgia's offense changed their strategy with respect to the Auburn defense through, two, through a pass, two out of three plays. Chip Andrews averaging right at 40 yards per punt. Trey Gaines, who's a 170-pound freshman for Auburn, is the deep man, and he's way back there showing respect for the foot of Chip Andrews. Andrews doesn't really get all of it, and Gaines will take a shot at it. Gets a good block to the boundary and he is rolled out of bounds at the 30. It was a 39-yard punt, an 8-yard return with 8.09 to play in the first quarter and no score between the Dogs and the Tigers. No score in the first quarter this year after Herschel. Better than some people thought, but what about Mitch Dooley? Here are his thoughts. Well, it's been a lot of fun so far and uh, it has been uh, very rewarding because uh, I really felt like we'd have a pretty good football team. I think our team felt that way. Uh, Herschel uh, Walker came with a with a great class, and uh, that class is seniors now. And uh, I think they uh, have uh, tried to prove that they have not been a one-man football team. They never were in the first place. But I think it, this year has been special to them, and uh, I'm proud of what they've been able to accomplish so far. Auburn comes up now. Those comments from Coach Dooley yesterday. That's the 30. First down for the Tigers. Their second possession of the ball game. And Campbell on first down will put it in the air. And he goes deep with it. And the pass is incomplete. The intended receiver was Ed West, the tight end, a senior out of Lakeland, Alabama. And he was sort of pinched in between two people, one of them being Terry Hogue, who makes his first appearance of the ball game. Terry Hogue will play a vital role in defense against the wishbone. He'll line up mostly at linebacker and he would be a pursuit man to the plays away from him and a blitzing man on plays to his side. Number 14, consensus All-American last year. Out of Huntsville, Texas, and uh, almost a four-point student in, in sciences and genetics. Second down and 10 for Auburn. Unusual to see Auburn throwing first down passes, but they've got to do something against Georgia. They know that. They give the ball to A.G., and for the first time today, A.G. finds some running room and picks up eight yards. Right now, let us check in with Jim Lampley in New York. A couple of pertinent details on these bowl implication games, Keith. The Penn State-Notre Dame game, a wild-scoring affair, won by Penn State on a Strang touchdown run with 19 seconds left. UCLA lost to Arizona, missing a game-tying field goal try from 37, won the last play of the game. Now back to Keith Jackson. Thank you, Jimmy. A couple of big scores there. It is third down and two for Auburn, and the ball goes to Bo Jackson. And Jackson on pure muscle dives into the middle and grinds away and roots his way very close to the first down. Bo Jackson against uh, Florida two weeks ago had touchdown runs of 80 yards and 54 yards. Fourth down and short yardage. They won't go. They're not going to gamble on fourth and a foot. Bo got down into that pile and Georgia was able to hold him. And so on fourth and a foot, they'll punt with Lewis Colbert coming in, averaging 42 yards per kick. Jimmy Harrell will go deep for Georgia. Lewis Colbert, quite a story himself. High, high hanger. Jimmy Harrell has no choice but to call fair catch back just inside the Georgia 20. It was a 42-yard punt with no return, and we have no score. Seven oh six to play in the first quarter. Georgia gets the football first down just inside their 20-yard line. 
keep, I guess, the people would wonder why did Georgia and Auburn both roll first down in the last possession this early. They're trying to break the trends of what they've done in the past and try to catch the other team making a mistake. Scott Williams at fullback, David McCluskey at tailback for Georgia as they line up in the eye, McCluskey to the ball. And he slashes in there, and he moves it out to about the 24-yard line. Here's a look at the Auburn defensive people now, and they're good ones. John Daly, Doug Smith, Dow Ockman, Donnie Humphrey, and Quincy Williams, the big people. Linebackers Greg Carr, he came into this ball game with 116 tackles. The other backer is Jeff Jackson, David King, Jimmy Warren, Vic Beasley, and Tommy Powell, the secondary. There's second down and six, short six. And Lessinger, the quarterback, keeps the ball, fumbles the football, and Auburn covers it. Auburn has the ball at the Georgia 23. Lessinger will hit, and the ball pops loose to Quincy Williams. Big Quincy, a senior from Douglas, for Georgia, comes what? up with a recovery. Watch 99, Doug Smith. Who, who, Doug Smith's right arm, he's going to whip the block at first. It's an option play. The quarterback's got it in both hands, so watch him strip the ball with his big right hand. Doug was all Southeastern Conference last year as a defensive tackle. A big play for him right there. Now Quincy Williams comes across and pounces on it, and Auburn's in business after the Georgia turnover at the Bulldog 23. They line up in the wishbone. Ed West is flexed to the left. They've got a wide man to the top. And the ball is pitched outside the line of James, and James gets away from one, and Culpepper runs him down and out of bounds at the 19. Here we watch the Auburn coaches talking to their defensive people about the, the Georgia offense. Since the Texas game, Auburn has averaged 400 left total yards, 33 points on offense. Which both teams have a tendency to get better and better as the season goes along. Second down, long five near the 19. Hidden off to the fullback, stepped by the quarterback, number 90, Freddie Gilbert, defensive end, senior from Griffin. Grabs Randy Campbell and throws him down. Freddie Gilbert, number 90, is the big playmaker for the Georgia defense, and he has been for the last two years. He has 20 plays where he's tackled opponents for a loss or sacked the paper. And he has 10 sacks and also 10 plays tackled for the loss. Just a great player as the tackle chart shows. Third down and a short six for a long time. Chris Woods is flanked out of the picture. Campbell goes along the line, keeps it and turns up field and gets the first down for Auburn as he got inside the 15 and then cut it back before Darrell Jones brought him down. Campbell weighs 165 pounds. There we look at Pat Dye, who's turned three college programs around, East Carolina, Wyoming, and now Auburn. Randy Campbell, number 14, is the catalyst to quote uh, Pat Dye old comments of this offensive unit. He has to make those decisions in both the running and passing. It is first down at the Georgia 12. Ball goes to Bo Jackson, bounces to the outside, and he's caught behind the line of scrimmage. Great tackle, gets inside the five, down at the three. That's why Pat Dye says Bo Jackson's one of the best athletes in the country playing football. Two Georgia people had him, and they just simply couldn't hold it. Bo Jackson is just a sophomore. But he is so big and so strong, he really doesn't know how good he can be. But watch this illustration of what a big man can do when he's got his shoulders turned downfield and wants to go for that goal line. Just a sensational run by Bo Jackson, the sophomore halfback from Auburn. The ball is on the three. It is second down, a yard and a half for a first down. Three yards from the goal line. Campbell, outside. James got a block. Touchdown. Jackson, open the door for him. Watch the blocking on the right. The triple option. Georgia Lex stop the ball back, stop the quarterback. The great block with the defensive halfback Jones, number 17. Let's 
team walk into the end zone. It'll go into the books as a four-yard run. It was just outside the three. They call it four, and it's six-nothing Auburn. Here's the extra point try by Del Greco. The holder is Mike Mann, the quarterback, and everything works to perfection. He's 34 out of 34 in extra points for the season, and at 434, Auburn goes on top. Number, number 87, Ron Middleton, the tight end, watch him seal off the inside. When a ball carry, when the fake goes in to the fullback, you have a chance to seal off the linebacker, uh, Culpepper, allowing James to go in for the touchdown. Great execution, and we'll be right back after this. Field position football. You make a mistake, they make you pay for it. That's the history of both teams. And Auburn just put one on Georgia to lead 7 to nothing with 4.34 to go in the first quarter of play after the Georgia quarterback fumble. Darrell Jones is one of the deep men. Kick is well back in the end zone and out of bounds in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 where Georgia will have it first down. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is just down the road from Athens. It'll be played in Atlanta. The Los Angeles Rams and the Atlanta Falcons getting after one another in uh, NFC Western Conference battle. Be a good one. The Los Angeles Rams have probably the rookie of the year, and Eric Dickinson, the running back, really having a sensational first season for the Rams. Gorgeous day. Just a few swisty clouds. Beautiful day for a game of football, and Lashinger puts it up. Goes down the sidelines. The pass is incomplete. He was on the hand of Herman Archie, but Jimmy Warren was there with just enough bother to cause him to lose it. Archer is going to run a pattern that it gave Auburn trouble last year in this ball game. Going out in the flat, the quarterback fakes the ball to him, then he turns deep. But uh, since the halfbacks last year were burned on this for an 80-yard touchdown pass, Jimmy Warren is there. He doesn't play it very uh, effectively. Archer, Archie had his hands on the ball, but couldn't hold. Second down and 10. Handed off inside to the fullback, Barry Young. And the senior from Swainsboro gets about two, maybe three on the plunge up the middle. And so it brings up third and long for Georgia and probably another passing down. That's capacity here at Sanford Stadium. It has been sold out all along through the season. And it's going to put Georgia up among the attendance leaders in the country, obviously, with the addition here. They used to set them up on the railroad tracks up there where they could preload, but they filled it in now and uh, made it one of the bigger stadiums of the country. 11,000 Auburn people are here. Last finger on an option. Tries to cut it back up the middle, and he is nailed by 41. Pat Thomas, the sophomore linebacker. He just locked his leg, and Chip Andrews will come in to punt. So the third. Auburn defensive people are containing the Georgia offense quite well. They're doing a, an effective job. Georgia's changed their game pattern. They've thrown on first down. Uh, on both series, both possessions, and it's been, it's been incomplete, forced him into a punting situation. Trey Gaines goes back, Chip Andrews to punt. He averaged, uh, his average coming in is just right at 40. His first punt was a 39-yarder, and Gaines had an eight-yard return. High hanger. Had a fair catch, it's called by Gaines. And uh, downfield, Auburn will have it first down at the 34. Yesterday, in talking with the coaches, I visited with Pat Dye about the makeup of this team. This football team is hungry. Uh, it's made up of a group of seniors that, that uh, had a lot of faith in, in me and our staff when the transition was made several years ago. Had a lot of faith in Auburn to come there under the circumstances that they came there and a group of young players, sophomores and freshmen, that believed in a dream when we went out to recruit them two years ago. And that's what this football team is made up of. And it's, a, it's been a very exciting season and a very re rewarding season. And uh, we're excited just to have an opportunity that we have today. The opportunity they have today, as you saw Jackson pick up about three yards, is, uh, or eight you rather, is this. If they beat Georgia today, they'll snap a string of 23 consecutive wins in the conference for Georgia. They'll snap 24 straight wins uh, between the hedges. They will uh, guarantee a share of the SEC title, and quite possibly if they can handle it, in fact, if they can handle Alabama December 3rd, they'll go to the Super Bowl. Up the middle, Jackson. A little delayed draw to Bo Jackson, and he blows it out of there and picks up a first down at midfield where Tony Flack brought him down. This is a play that Auburn has had. It. The play starts to the right. Georgia linebackers move very quickly in that direction. 
the hand back to Jackson going, and you can see the natural hole that was made by the fake to the right. Coming back to the left, Jackson nearly scored. They don't give him midfield. They mark it close to the 49. Just inside the 49 for the first down. Jackson now 35 yards on six carries. First down pass by Campbell down the middle. Incomplete is tight end. Jeff Parks was open to him, and he missed him. Looking at scores, Nebraska out 6-0 over Kansas in the first quarter of their ball game. Illinois headed for the Rose Bowl. That will lock it for them right there. That's their ticket. And SMU leading Texas 9-0 at halftime. And BYU, Colorado State. Gordon Hudson was hurt. A great tight end for BYU. And it hurt them some. Florida was a winner today over Kentucky. And uh, Alabama and, this, and Southern Miss in a pretty good football game. Second down, San Auburn, just short of their 49. They lead 7 to nothing. Two minutes to go, first quarter. Uh, Campbell with the ball, going down the line, turns it back inside. Harry Hogue had come up from the rover back position, and he took away the option man. He was shoulder to shoulder, in fact, a huge shadow over little Lionel James, and there was no way that Campbell could get him the ball. This is the strategy that Georgia wants to use. Stop the pullback, stop the pitch, and make Campbell, who only has a slightly more than a one-yard average running the ball, keep it on the option play. Very well played by the Georgia defense. Upset there as Virginia bounces back after a loss to Georgia Tech to beat North Carolina. And the Tar Heels having their problems in the latter portion of the season. On third and long, third and seven, Campbell has good protection. Quick this pass, it is complete. Good to Jeff Parks. And Parks has the first down for Auburn at the Georgia 40. Good poise by Randy Campbell, the quarterback. Most wishbone quarterbacks won't stay in the pocket that long. They take off and run with it. Georgia had no rush, gave him plenty of time to finally spot the receiver and hit the key first down pass. Georgia Tech rolling against Wake Forest. They have a chance to finish with a winning uh, record in the ACC. Pittsburgh being Army today. Panthers look like they're headed for a bowl game. Campbell on first down. 24th time this season they've thrown on first down. Bulldogs are chasing him. He gets his pass away, and it is incomplete. And he's lucky to get it back. And uh, Terry uh, Daryl Jones is howling that uh, Jeff Park, the tight end, shoved him. Otherwise, he might have had an interception, but he gets no call. Georgia defense knocked uh, Jackson coming out of the backfield down. He was the first choice receiver. He never did get up and get in the pattern, and Campbell was just trying to scramble and get rid of it, avoid the loss, and uh, it could have been offensive pass interference on Parks' part. Down at the end of the play. Ball is at the 40 of Georgia, where it is second down and 10 for Auburn, and you've got 53 seconds to play in the first quarter. First win of the year for Yale. Armand Poser's Bulldogs beating Princeton. Hope comes creeping up along the line of scrimmage. Let's see if he comes on a full blitz. He does, but he's behind the play. They hand it off inside to Lionel James. And it's the first time today that they have sent Little Train up the middle. And he gets something out of it. The Georgia defense continuing to do their part. The lone touchdown for Auburn was set up by a fumble by the Georgia offense. The defense doing a good job of containing the Auburn offense. Tim Jesse comes in, number 25, 200-pound uh, sophomore from Pop. Alabama he's replacing Bo Jackson at the right halfback spot Jesse has very good speed he's a rangy sort of a fellow with a big stride here's again that offset now as they line the two halfbacks up in a flanker spot and give the ball to Tommy Ag. and Ag will not get the first down Freddie Gilbert was the man that slowed him down and then he got some help and Calvin Ruff number 86 really put a shoulder on him and knocked him away from the first down marker fake pass and run by Wisconsin team aren't usually effective for the simple reason they don't throw that much to get the Georgia defense to take the bite and rush the passer, open up a natural hole. Georgia defense showed their speed, their ability to, to play the fake pass and run. Fourth down and four, Bo Jackson has come back into the lineup and uh, Auburn's going to go. The ball is uh, at the Georgia 34. So they'll either leave it in around the 30 for Georgia or else they'll get themselves the first down. Campbell coming down the line on the option, turns back in the middle, sticks his head down and dives for it. It just depends on the mark. Keith, that did not get in the spot for the first down. It's short. Georgia takes over. 
And the first quarter comes to a close. The Georgia defensive unit have their spirit picked up by their hold on it. And after 15 minutes of play, it's Auburn 7, Georgia nothing. Cool, bright, sunny day in Athens, Georgia. The Bulldogs yet to make a first down in the game. Have the football at their 31 first down. Auburn leading 7 to nothing. Archie goes in motion, pitch back to Montgomery, Keith Montgomery, tip goes around the left side, and moves out to about the 34, where they knock him out of bounds, and here are your first quarter steps. You see Georgia's having difficulty in moving the ball. Two possessions, no first down. Auburn has moved the ball effectively between the 30-yard line, got a break, the untimely fumble by the Georgia quarterback, setting up the one touchdown. Auburn dominating both offensively and defensively in this first quarter. Second down and seven for the Bulldogs at their 34. Outside, Montgomery cuts it back, finds a hole, dives for the marker. He's across the 40 and close to a first down. Gerald Williams, defensive tackle, sophomore out of Valley, Alabama, makes the tackle for Auburn. They will measure. The referee is Dick Burleson, the umpire Harold Johnson, linesman George Schubert, line judge Bill Schroer. Field judge is Ron Gilbert, and the back judge is Billy T. Just short. Third down and inches for Georgia. As we look at the officials, I would like to point out the change in the Georgia offense. This year, it's option plays with a quarterback, last finger, keeping the ball and making yardage. He's averaging over four yards a try, rushing the football, and that does include the sack. That average. They send in a second fullback, Scott Williams. David McCluskey, a 215-pound freshman from Rome, goes in at tailback. So they try to get as much leverage as they can. It figures Young will get the ball. He does, and he's got the first down. The thick Georgia offensive line gets a good surge most of the time. Jimmy Harper and Guy McIntyre, both all SEC last year returning. We had to pick and match the team, Auburn's defensive front and Georgia's offensive front are the strength of this football team. That is the Back first, first down of the ball game for Georgia. Ball is sitting at their 42 with Montgomery and Young now. The setbacks behind last year. John gives it to Montgomery, and down he goes, shooting through. And making the tackle is Gerald Robinson, the defensive end, a big sophomore from Notasoga, Alabama. Number 99, Doug Smith, was all confident. Let's see what happens to him. Up the top of your screen, you're going to see Guy McIndyre, number 94. The old saying of the offensive coaches, keep your face and stay off your face. That means you can sustain your block. That's a perfect example by Guy McIntyre. Ball is on the 39, a loss on the play of three yards, second down and 13. Lessinger showing pass, puts it up. Got a man wide open and missed him. Kevin Harris had broken free by three yards, and Lessinger's pass was wild. The He's theory, 0 for 4 now. Keith, the theory behind that play is we watched Vince Dooley, who's one of the most highly respected and admired people in our profession, one national championship, six Southeastern Conference, 14 bowl games. Really a great football coach. But Georgia was taking advantage of the eagerness to tackle of David King, their, their fine quarterback. He took the fake, received a wide open for the touchdown. Third down and 13. Last thing they're trying to touch it downfield. He's wild again. He had Harris in between back and tried to touch it into him, but he missed him by a good four or five yards. So last thing having a rough start in the ball game. Well, you're going to see how he's not going to be very open over on the boundary. He's got Quincy Williams and Robinson in front of him. Uh, last thing it does very, uh, playing very wisely as far as I'm concerned, he overthrows him right here, gets the ball out of bounds. Last thing is not known as a passer on passes down. Mostly play action passes on running situations. I know a lot of quarterbacks that would hit him right there, though. He had a good eight yards of clearance for quite a long time. High hanging kick this time by Chip Andrews. Dandy back at the 16, Craig Gaines. Oh, he's collared on the 22. 46 yard punt, eight yard return, and a flag. The flag is back at the line of scrimmage. 
could be on either Georgia or Auburn. Uh, normally on a situation where the flag was dropped, uh, could be off it, uh, defensive holding. Let's wait and see what uh, the options are. Must be complicated. Personal foul from Georgia. I thought it was uh, looked back like down almost a clothesline down there on the uh, on Gainus. Well, the Let's see where they're going to mark it from. Keith, I'm glad you mentioned the clothesline because that's something that's been made illegal in college football. You cannot tackle with an extended arm in the face. You cannot make contact. So they're going to go back and make Georgia kick the ball again. Andrews had hit a 46-yard. Again, it's had an eight-yard return. So the personal foul is going to back Georgia up, and Auburn should get the football in very good field position with 12 minutes and 44 seconds to play in the first half, and the Tigers leading Georgia by a score of 7 to nothing. Under these circumstances, I think that's a good decision. First is Broadway had gotten off a beautiful punt. Excuse me, Andrews had gotten off a beautiful punt. And four Here's the call. Personal foul on the kicking team. Replay fourth down. And it just backs Georgia up and forces them to, to kick again with a chance to something to happen uh, dramatically in Auburn's favor. Standing at the 10, should hit it around the 14-15. He gets it over the 15. Auburn's going to have a chance to block it because they've got 10 men up. Now they've brought one out, two out. Still nine people up there. Not as good a kick either. Sort of shanked it off the side of his foot and takes an Auburn bounce back up field. So that's the difference from the 22 up to the 48. That's a 26 yard difference. 12 33 to play in the first half. Keith and Frank mentioned the Latsinger's wild throws in that last series. I just talked to John Williams. He says he is going in next series to be the quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs. Todd Williams considered by some a little better passer than John Lastinger. He's a sophomore out of Waycross and figures the heir apparent for the quarterback job for next year. He played quite well in the opening game, actually, against UCLA. And Keith, he, he brought the Bulldogs back to a tie against Clemson uh, in the fourth quarter with some outstanding play. Gary Cantrell is back in, and Terry Hogue is out now at that overback position for Georgia. As Auburn goes to work first down. Just Outside their 48, give it to Bo Jackson, hit behind the line of scrimmage, hit twice, hit three times, and finally down by Culpepper. Tommy Thurston had a shot at him, but uh, he is so big and so strong, he, uh, they list him at 230. Bo said he actually weighs about 226. Those are games that are coming up here on ABC. Army-Navy out of the Rose Bowl in Pasadena on Friday the 25th. Then down uh, to Aggieland we go for that annual between A&M and Texas. And then December 3rd, Alabama and Auburn at Legion Field in Birmingham. Second down, ball at five. Ball is at the Georgia 46. And Campbell pass. Good. Thrown quickly. Good release to Clayton Buford. Buford had come to Auburn as a quarterback. I remember his freshman year. He played some against Alabama. Played pretty well as a quarterback. But he found that he could get more work and more playing time as a wide receiver. And that's where he's working right now. It's good for a first down at the Georgia 38. Campbell checking off Georgia jump. Number 52, Henry Harris, a freshman from Decatur. Just absolutely couldn't contain himself anymore, and he took a jump at it, and he jumped too soon. Campbell is changing the play. He sees something that he doesn't like, or he sees something he could take advantage of the Georgia defense. On the previous play, he saw the one-on-one -on -one coverage and went to the receiver, Buford, for the first down. The wishbone quarterback, I mentioned again, Dead ball foul, illegal procedure, defense. The wishbone quarterback is a position of decision making, both on the option play and using the audible. Five yard penalty moves it back to the 33, where it is first down and five Auburn. That's another mistake by Georgia. Campbell 
Pitches it on a reverse. It goes to Buford coming back. Good coverage by Georgia. And he runs it inside the 30 down to about the 29. Here again, Jim Lampley. Another big day for the statisticians in Nebraska, Keith. Mike Rozier in the second quarter has 21 carries for 195 yards. This was his third touchdown run of the day. He has broken Lydell Mitchell's season record for touchdowns rushing with 27 this year. He's going to have his third straight 200-yard game. Back to Keith Jackson. Boy, that Nebraska, they can hit you so many ways, but in particular, Rozier. Wow. It is second down, a yard and a half for the first down for Auburn. Ball at the Georgia 29. And Campbell keeps it. Gets the first down as he stops at the 26. The Georgia defense again keeping Campbell to, uh, making Campbell keep the ball. The old theory, you bleed slow with a quarterback keeping the ball. That's not a good runner. It gushes against you when you let Jackson and James and A.G. break into that secondary. The Golden Eagle of Auburn. War Eagle and Texas came from behind. They were trailing 14 to 3 at halftime, came back to beat the Horn Frogs of TCU 20 to 14. Jim Wacker almost pulling off one, and TCU has been a big problem for Texas through the years of, of their competition. They drive Darrell Royal crazy, didn't they? They certainly did. They have upset Texas late in November and knocked them out of the top bowl a number of times in the last three decades. It's first down over. Ball is on the Georgia 26. Campbell pitches high in the air. Bo Jackson gets out there and turns in a big play. All the way down to about the six-yard line of Georgia. Tony Flack finally brought him down. What a great play by Randy Campbell. The option play, he's going to pitch it out as he is being grabbed by the Georgia player. The fullback is not there. Fullback blocks Culpepper, makes a tremendous block. Watch him just throw the ball out. Now watch this big train, Jackson, turn it on. 18, Dean misses him, and he outruns a couple of Georgia Bulldogs, and finally Holt comes all the way across to assist in the tackle. Underneath that stack was Tony Flack, number eight, and he's the man hurt on the play. Jackson now, eight carries and 60 yards for Big Bo, and it's first and goal to go Auburn at the Georgia six. Pat Dye told me yesterday they have to devise ways to get the ball to Jackson at least 15 times the ball game and the James 15 times the ball game, and so they run plays other than the wishbone to, to get this done on some occasion. That was a triple option that Georgia let the ball be picked, something they didn't want to happen. I think it's interesting, too, as Flack now gets up and runs off the field, he's all right. But to give you an idea of something of the ability of Bo Jackson, Frank, he runs most of his plays left-handed. In fact, he is a right-handed person, and it obviously is easier to run right, but Jackson doesn't do it very often. Most of the time, he goes left. Keith, that's a very good point. It's, it's awkward for him at best, running to the left. First and goal for the Packers, Georgia 6. And it's Jackson back into the middle, picks up one to the five. We look at Pat Dye giving the play to the receiver, going in to call it for the quarterback. What a fine football coach this man is. And how he fits into the Auburn plan, and the Auburn people love him. Keith, I think, is a perfect marriage in the coaching profession, and with a school, he loves Auburn, and Auburn loves him. Black is back into the lineup now for Georgia. Second down goal to go at the five. Campbell gives to A.G. And he's right about the two. Last week, Georgia uh, against Florida, a lot, Florida penetrated the Georgia 20-yard line six times, came away without a touchdown, three field goals. So the Georgia defense knows how to play with their backs to the wall. As we look at this, Dooley, very concerned right now. There's Pat Dye, two very fine coaches, been in a lot of big ball games in their time. Third down and goal to go from the two for Auburn. Campbell wants to throw. Hit hard. And dropped on the four. Knocks Culpepper. 
Knox Culpepper is going to number 48, makes a critical play. He reads the play. Now he makes the decision to go and pick up the tight end and then decides to rush the passer, forces the Campbell to cut back and make the play into a apparent field goal position. Another goal line stand for the Georgia defense. Del Greco is in for the field goal try. It'll be a 20-yarder. If he makes it, he will tie Auburn's career field goal record of 38. Man gets it down. Del Greco gets it up and nails it. It's 8.03 to play in the first half. Auburn builds its lead now to a 10-0 score over the Georgia Bulldogs. Team. 10 nothing ball game. Auburn leading Georgia with 8.03 to go in the first half. Albert Manning, number 27, and Gary Moss, number 24, have gone in to return the kick for the Georgia Bulldogs. So you got new people in there to run that ball back. Number three, Del Greco. Del Greco kicks it off. High. It's in the end zone. Rakan, no, he's not. He started to come and then decided to put it down. Here's Terry Hogue on tradition. Well, I think uh, what's meant by that is just that the program at the University of Georgia has recruited winning people over the past few years. And what, what they put out on the field to play are not necessarily the fastest, not necessarily the greatest athletes, but people that are going to give 100% for 60 minutes and are going to play with their heart. And as corny as that may sound, it's going to win football games for you if, if you're willing to, to fight it out until the last play and never accept defeat until the clock runs out. And I think that everybody on the, on the football team has that attitude that we're going to find a way to win and we're just going to keep fighting in, until it happens for us. You throw the defense to simplify that. Now it's up to the offense to reflect it as well. Todd Williams has gone in replacing last finger at quarterback. They run an option play with Tron Jackson and Jackson picked up about three yards. Talked to Vince Dooley about his running backs. He told me yesterday it's been difficult to recruit running backs because Herschel Walker was their tailback and would have been for another year. Georgia's net yardage right now is minus three. 17 yards. They've lost 20 on penalties. Williams pass in the air off the hands of Thurman Archie incomplete. And it's third down and seven, and the Bulldogs just can't get anything going offensively. Todd Williams. It's a good option quarterback and uh, has had better success passing than last finger. Number 15, changing quarterback can be, can ignite the team on some occasions. That's what George is hoping for right here. Auburn defense continues to outmuscle the Georgia offense. Those three big guys up front are really rough. And they're big and tall, tough to see over. Williams turns it back up to you, finds enough daylight to get the first down. Todd Williams runs it up to the 33, where Quincy Williams brings him down. If Georgia ever needed a big play, it was right there. Williams made it. It was a bootleg pass. Means he's going to fake one way and roll back for a pass. But Auburn had penetrated across, and look at the hole that William has when he decides to run and he knows where the first down marker is and he dives and makes it. Took a pretty good lick getting it, but he got it. And it's out on the 33, first down for Georgia. Up and down the line, William keeps it, turns up across the 35, gets it up to about the 37. That's four yards, second down six coming up. And there's the time remaining in the first half of play with Auburn leading 10 to nothing. Georgia's offense needs to assert itself right here, make something go down, and where they can go down the field and have a chance to score before the half. Be very crucial for them. Second down, six. That's Archie in motion. Williams looking. Throws it to Archie. Archie's out here one on one. He's six foot five and uh, weighs. 195 pounds. The Auburn man had him short of the first down marker, but he just put his shoulder into him and he carried Jimmy Warren for a ride and got the first down. Looks like when you throw the ball out to the wide receiver who has gone in motion, you have a chance to get a soft corner, meaning that the defensive cornerback is laying back and Archie has time to get the ball. Now, once he gets the ball, he becomes a good runner. Warren, number 45, 
Last goes in to the ground, but not before the first set. 44-yard line, first Georgia from the pass completion of the game. 6-14 to go in the first half, and uh, Archie goes to the wide side of the field. Williams hands it off up the middle, and the gain by the fullback Young to the 49. That's a good five-yard pick up there. With Williams in the ball game, he now, with his option abilities, spreading the offering defensive people a little bit. Georgia getting a little better angle for its blockers up front. So consequently, they're moving the football. They have not been able to do it previously, as you can see. That fumble uh, resulted in an open touchdown. Young goes in motion. They give it quickly to number 25, Tron Jackson. Jackson, the fastest of the group of backs, perhaps. But he could not turn it upfield as David King, a junior from Fairhope, Alabama, came in and brought him down. David King, number 27, the cornerback, is an interesting story. He came on the Georgia campus two years ago and started after one week of practice on the first team and has started every game six. Came on the Auburn campus. On the Auburn campus, excuse me. Oh, so and so Folks in that balloon couldn't get a ticket. They're trying to work their way over here so they can watch them. Third down and three. Short three. They go back to Jackson, and Jackson won't get it. No chance. I mean, he just ran into a crowd, and everybody over there was bigger than he was, in particular Doug Smith at 6'6", 275. Jackson weighs only 175. I was going to make give up 100 pounds. You know? <laughs> well, George's uh, tailback... Uh, are not all that uh, effective running the ball. Uh, Jackson, of course, made a bad cut there. He should have stayed inside instead of going to the outside. So Andrews has to come in to punt again. His last one was 28 yards. Auburn's going to get the ball with about 4.15 to play. Trey Gaines is sending back on his 10. Andrews gets it up high. And Gaines calls a fair catch. Georgia ought to be able to kill it pretty deep. And they are inside the five. Down on the three. Well, that's the way the kicking game's supposed to work. Andrews hits a high-hanging 45-yard punt. Steve Boswell puts it down on the three, and that's where Auburn will have the ball. Number three ranked Auburn. First down at their own three. Leading number four ranked Georgia 10 to nothing. The Georgia defense, getting its back up here in the last series, will try to hold them deep. You've got four minutes and six seconds to play in the first half. They'll try to give the offense some field position. This is one of those territories that uh, causes the coach to fret considerably because the mistake here really hurts you. Often cast in a Georgia mistake deep in its own territory. Give it inside to the fullback. No, they don't. They go outside to Bo Jackson, and Jackson runs him out of trouble, and he's still going. Nope, he hit the chalk. He hit the chalk back around the 31 near the 32. He almost broke that thing for 97 yards, but uh, he did step on the boundary as he crossed the 31 marker. The amazing thing to me is that Auburn would run the triple option from the old five-yard line. You can see that Georgia got caught inside, a block by a little James on the quarterback Slack. Hogue is now playing free safety instead of quarterback. He gets outrun by Jackson, but Jackson steps, I believe, right there. Oh, there he is, left foot coming down right there. Beautiful execution on the triple option, getting all this out of trouble. Gain of 28 yards on the play. First down, Packers at their own 31. Give it to the fullback. And Aikie. Well, George is handling him all right. But uh, James and Jackson are tearing him up on the corner. Freddie Gilbert, number 90, is the big defensive lineman that Georgia relies on to stop the play. He's stunning to the inside. He comes free. He reads the fullback. The fullback has the ball, and he makes the tackle. He was the block. He was the one, the player that Campbell was going to read an option. Campbell misread it. Left the ball there. Gilbert makes the play. Second down and nine. Jesse is in. Old Jackson out for a moment to get his breath after that 28-yard gallop. Actually, he ran much farther than that, but he had hit the chalk. That Campbell keeping gives it ahead to Lionel James, and James is up close to the 40. He's short of a first down, so they'll be looking at third and short. The Georgia cornerback is forced so deep in the backfield 
that uh, the quarterback is pitching to the halfback in front of the Georgia defensive end, something you rarely see in any type of option. It'll be third down and two plus, about two and a half to keep it. The Auburn offensive line continues to do their job. Two all-conference players there, Arrington and Jordan, leading that uh, charge. Outside, Jesse having trouble holding on to the ball. And Georgia sacked him up for a big loss back inside the 35. Andy Loy, a sophomore from Knoxville, was out there. And when Tim Jesse on that high pitch had trouble controlling it, they're lucky they didn't lose it. The kamikaze charge of the cornerback coming across right there, makes the play. Could have been a fumble as Keith Benches now off and has to punt. Lewis Colbert's first punt and only punt so far today was a 42-yarder. Jimmy Harrell is deep for Georgia. Oh, he's got another good one. He kicks with a half a foot. Harrell with a good return from the 16 to the 26, 27, 50-yard punt. Give him 11 yards on the return and even two minutes to play in the first half. And Auburn leads it by 10. All right, with two minutes to play in the first half, Georgia has the ball at their own 26. And Kevin Butler, their outstanding place kicker, has been warming up on the sideline. They would really like to have something on the board before they go to the clubhouse. They're double wide to the bottom of the picture. Williams quickly to Archie for a screen. Now he wants to throw. Throws it up in the air for Kevin Harris. Harris downfield. He is run over by the defensive man, number 31, Vic Beasley. But the key to it is Beasley timed it just right and did not make contact with the intended receiver until the ball was there. A little razzle down to the play that uh, Archer made George Jones uh, early in the game. Now he drops back and he throws the ball. And Beasley, number 31, not knowing where the ball was, got his hand on it, Keith. Watch it again. Uh, Beasley is looking at the receiver, not at the ball, because he's cheating on the play. He's trying to catch him. Now all he does is raise his hand. At the same time, Harris puts his hands out to catch the ball. Archie had thrown the ball another five yards. Harris would have been long gone with it. As Todd Williams pulls it down and keeps it and runs it for about five yards to the 31. Ben Thomas on the tackle, a big junior who stayed at home to play football. He's from Ashburn, Georgia, which is not very far from the Auburn campus. You've got a minute and 36 seconds to play in the first half. Timeout. Speaking of campus, let's take a look at Auburn. In the land-grant tradition, Auburn is a people's university based in research, instruction, and extension. From coal gasification to new rabies vaccine, Auburn is on the frontier of meaningful exploration, making the quality of life better for all of us. For seven generations, Auburn has been serving the public as each generation helps form the next. The genius of Auburn University is that of Auburn's history, Auburn's people, and Auburn's place, the sum is greater than its part. Well, you've had two Georgia mistakes, really, that have uh, contributed heavily to a 10-0 Auburn lead, a fumble by last singer. Auburn stuck in the end zone. You had uh, an illegal procedure or encroachment against Henry Harris. That kept Auburn moving, giving him a first and five situation, and they moved it on down. And now, if Herman Archie had been able to throw the ball just another five yards farther, Kevin Harris would have scored. Would have, would have, would have, and could have don't necessarily uh, indicate blood relations to them. Third down and four and a half as Williams puts it up and it is batted down. He delivered the ball and he wound up hitting Greg Carr, the Auburn linebacker, right on the number. So it's an incomplete forward pass and brings up fourth down. Carr, number 54, has had a sensational year. The coaches say he's one of the best linebackers they've ever seen. He's right in the line of fire of the pass to Kay, and when he jumped, Williams just couldn't get the ball over his head. And that brings in Chip Andrews at a minute and 32 on fourth down and four and a half. He'll punt it away to Trey Gaynor. His last punt was a 45-yarder. He has had one four and a 28. Get out, Get out. Pretty good kick. Gaynor comes up for a fair catch. 
at the 35. And there Auburn will have the ball with a minute and 25. Now, this is a very good time to go to your gadget play if you've got one. We'll see whether or not Pat Dye decides to do it. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the world's top professional skaters competing for honors in New York City and the World Weightlifting Championship from Moscow. That's at 5, ABC's Wide World of Sports, 5 Eastern Time next Saturday. Auburn is going to the double wing. They're going to try to score again if they possibly can. Campbell back. Throws it to Bo Jackson. And Jackson in traffic. He is tripped up. Number 57 got a hold of him, Kenneth Sims. And took away his leg. But even so, the big guy gets something out of the play. He moves it up to about the 37. This being the second game in a row in which Georgia has not scored a touchdown in the first half. How good a ball, or how good an athlete is uh, Bo Jackson. He's the first Auburn athlete to earn three levels in one year in 30 years. Campbell keeping it. Jackson turning the play. He's taken away from him. Campbell has to keep it. And little Randy runs for a first down at the Georgia 40 before Andy Loy shoves him out of bounds. What the, the Randy Campbell show right now. He's playing a sensational game. Once again, Georgia is going to force the quarterback to keep it. But where was the linebacker? The linebacker should have been scraping off into the gap inside the defensive end. But for some reason, he gets uh, faked inside. Now, Williams uses his head right here. He wants to get outside and stop the clock. He picked up a good block by his wide receiver, and he does just that. Campbell has now run for 40 yards in the ball game. It's at the Georgia 41, and it's the first down for the Tigers. And the time, 44 seconds to play in the first half. They get all banged up inside. It uh, looked like Campbell wanted to belly it to his fullback and then pull it out and go to James, but... They got all tangled up inside. There's a penalty flag, and it looks like the penalty may be against uh, the Tigers. The right, the right tackle, Wallace, jumped offside. A little bit of ego, wanting to get to the linebacker and block him. Well, having no gain on the play, Georgia elects to take the penalty, moves Auburn back to the 45. That is the first Dead penalty. Ball foul, illegal procedure, offense, first down. What do we've had? One flag against Georgia and one against Auburn. They're whacking the daylights out of each other, but we they're had two, doing it within the rules. There were two fouls against Georgia. That penalty on the kick formation, punt formation, that was a, ended up in the key play. Making the catch, Tim Jesse swinging out of the backfield. He picks it up at the 35 of Georgia, mark it inside the 35, and now Auburn spins the timeout with 33 seconds to play in the first half. They can move it down another 15 yards, and Del Greco is going to have a shot at it if they can't get it into the end zone. Meantime, let's look at scores that are games that are in progress or have been completed. Nebraska, big over Kansas in the second quarter, as you see. The Illini on their way to the Rose Bowl. That win right there did it for them. Mike White really doing wonders up at Champaign. SMU and BYU both leading in their ball games. Ohio State headed for a major bowl, which seems to me the Ohio State-Michigan game is going to be a big one. And uh, Clemson just hammered Maryland 52 to 27. Well, once again, the coaches bury the team that makes the most yards rushing will win 80% of the games in college. And uh, Clemson just proved that point once again. Guy running the scoreboard in that Georgia Tech Wake Forest game. Got to be tired. There's Missouri and the Tigers trying to put themselves in a postseason bowl as well. It is second down and four for Auburn. Just inside the Georgia 35. Ball quickly to Lionel James. He pops out of the crowd and gets the first down. That stops the clock now to move the change at the Georgia 28 and 25 seconds to play in the first half. Harry Hogue on the tackle for Georgia. And timeout, Auburn. As we look at Pat Dye, Georgia played the screen perfectly, but the elusiveness of James uh, allowed him to break in the secondary and make the first half. Excuse me, yes, make the first half. Baylor becoming quite a factor in the Southwest Conference now, and UCLA had a chance to tie on a field goal as time ran out in the ball game out there. And Washington State trying to win their sixth against four losses with Oregon, Paul Wigan, having uh, been fired at Stanford during the past week. Interesting number about the Auburn football team. Their quarterback has not been sacked in 25 quarters. That's uh, been a long, long time. 
Look at Ben Bennett of Duke. Passed for 442 yards against North Carolina yeah, State most, and scored on the last play of the ball game. It was, uh, what was it, 20, uh, 21 to 6 or something like that. Uh, 20, 26 to 3. The seven going into the final quarter. Keep the key here is that uh, Ben Bennett only needs for 10 to 6 yards to to pass John Elway, and uh, he has a chance, 246, to pass Jim McMahon as all-time career passing leader. From the 27 of Georgia, first down, Auburn, 25 seconds to play, first half, Randy Campbell keeps it. They go to the tight side of the field, and Campbell, did he get out of bounds? No, he did not, Chief. The official has not stopped the clock. They run to the boundary side of the field. Georgia filled it up over there, and there's really no place for him to go, and now time is... He is tricking the, try to get one play off, try to pick up. No, can't, can't do, do it, it. Keith. Nope. Can't do it. So with six seconds to play, I would think Del Greco will come on. Auburn has no timeouts remaining. And that's what we're going to get. Keith, uh, I give you the that Del Greco has a little bit of a win to his back. We're going from our left to right. This will be a 32, 42-yard field goal. Well, he's got plenty of legs for that. Yes. The holder is Mike Mann. The snapper is Brian Delaney. Del Greco is from Key Biscayne, Florida. Mann is from Sylacauga, Alabama. And Delaney is from Rome, Georgia. So there are three states represented in this trio. They're going to call it a 41-yard field goal, but the ball is actually closer to the 42. This will be a new Auburn career record for touchdowns, 39, if he makes it. Six seconds to play in the first half. The holder is the quarterback, Mike Mann, who could possibly fake the field goal and try a pass. But I believe they'll go for the... I think they'll kick Yeah, they'll try to kick it. That's the best percentage play. At least three out of four from uh, this distance this season. Get a 20-yarder earlier. Plenty of legs. He knocked it right through there. And time runs out at the end of the first half. And the Auburn Tigers, an impressive first half for them as they go to the locker room leading the Georgia Bulldogs by a score of 13 to nothing. Now here is Tim Brandt with Coach Pat Dye. And Pat, I don't think you can ask for a better first half than that. Your kids executed extremely well. Well, uh, we did. We didn't get it in down there a while ago when we got it down there close. Georgia's got a great defensive football team. and. Uh, the, the difference in the ball game right now, of course, is we've controlled the ball on offense, and we've got to come back second half and continue to play well defensively and keep them off the field on, on offense. You've done that the first half. Time of possession heavily in your favor. Now, you came out of the blocks and gambled right away on a 52-yard field goal. Well, you know, I, uh, we really... I watched him kick a 51-yarder before the, before the game, and I knew that he was a yard out of his range, and that's what it was. If it had been a yard close, he'd have made it. Okay, good luck to second half, Pat. Okay, Pat Dye, an old Georgia player. While we have time out here at halftime, let's take a look at this Georgia campus. And on James' four-yard run to lead 7-0 in the first quarter, Al Del Greco hit a 20-yard field goal, 21, to make it 10-0, and then hit another one from 41 yards to make it 13-0, Auburn over Georgia at halftime, and the Bulldogs now coming back into the stadium. And they will be followed very shortly by the Auburn Tigers, which is wearing white on the road. The last time Georgia lost a conference football game, uh, in fact, lost a game here at uh, Sanford Stadium, as they call it, between the hedges, this team, Auburn, defeated them 33-13. to So Georgia's back out here trailing by 13, and let's go to Tim Brandt now and Coach Vince Dooley. Coach, I know you're not happy with the execution in the first half. And yet you take away that fumble, which led to a touchdown, and the offsides, which kept their drive alive, and it's a very close ball game. Yeah, but you can't take that away. I mean, that's part of the game. They're, they're playing well. Auburn has had a good first half. Their backs run well. they got some great backs. We haven't tackled them very well. Uh, but I hope that uh, we'll pick things up in the second half. Besides wrapping the arms, which we saw a couple of missed tackles, as you mentioned, in the first half, and you and I talked about preparing for the wishbone in one week is very tough to do. What adjustments can you make to, to slow it up? Well, the best thing you can do is just let yourself go and be a little more reckless, which we haven't been in the first half. And if we do that, uh, I hope things will turn around a little bit better for us in the second half. 
Okay, good luck the second half. So we are at halftime with a score. Auburn 13, Georgia nothing. We'll be back with the second half kickoff after this. A very quick reset on circumstances. Auburn ranked number three in the nation. Georgia ranked number four in the nation. Georgia wins. They go to the Sugar Bowl and win the conference title for a fourth consecutive time. Auburn with a win can guarantee a share of the conference title. Del Greco kicks off. It goes to Gary Moss. Moss from the goal line. Finds a little daylight. Hits the 25 and 30 and 35 and almost in fact across the 40. So Georgia opens it up with a big return to get good field position. But let's go back to the first half, first quarter touchdown. Watch Bo Jackson, number 34 of Auburn. Watch this run. He is in the clutches, right? Wrong. Watch the strength of the man as he runs and runs inside the five. And from there, it was Lionel James who took it into the end zone. John Lastinger comes back at quarterback. And the pitch goes to David McCluskey, number 43, the 215-pound tailback. And he's out to about the 45. On the right side of the picture, number 34, Bo Jackson will throw a block that springs Lionel James, the tight end, step back inside and field it from that direction, and Little Crane walks in. So that's where we are after the two field goals by Del Greco. It's 13-0 Auburn, and Georgia now, second down and about five and a half. And it's Muskowski into the crowd, and he's got a yard and that's all. So Georgia will be looking at third down and about four. Lastinger started the game. Williams replaced him in the second quarter. He's Lastinger coming back now, trying to get something going with Montgomery Young and an assortment of other backs working at tailback. Herman Archie, a wide man, and uh, Kevin Harris. Those are the big people up front. Barry Young, the fullback, and David McCluskey, the tailback, on third down and four for Georgia. Lastinger bootlegs it out, looks and throws. Has a man, passes from Blake, caught by Clarence Kay, the tight end. Lessinger is on the money with his pass, and suddenly Georgia is down first down at the Auburn 41. And Frank Royals has come out snorting. They've got their team fired up. Lessinger, number 12, as a starting quarterback at Georgia. He's 19 wins and one loss. This time he threw the ball right on the target. Kay is a fine tight end, caught it and made the first down. Montgomery is in his tailback now as they send Archie in motion. And the ball goes to Montgomery, and the blocking is pretty good up front this time for the tailback, and he hits it down near the Auburn 37. The big guys playing defense, John Daly, a 210-pound defensive end, Doug Smith, 6'6", 275 for Auburn. Now Ockman is the nose guard, 265, Johnny Humphrey at tackle, 260, and Quincy Williams, the other end, at 215. Linebackers, Greg Carr, 6'2", 215, and Jeff Jackson, 6'2", 225. It is second down and seven, Georgia, at the Auburn 37, and Lassinger drops the football. Lassinger turning around to pitch the ball, just simply dropped it. So there's a loss back to about the 44. David King, cornerback, a good first half for David. The other corner is Jimmy Warren, 5'11", 180. The safeties are Vic Beasley, 6'185", and Tommy Fowle, 5'10", 190. It is third down and 13 now for Georgia as they're backed up to the Auburn 44. Last finger to throw. Has time. Loops it downfield and it is incomplete. Deflected away the pass intended for Herman Archie. It is kind of strange to me uh, in this particular ball game, Fra uh, Frank Royals, that Clarence Kay, their big tight end, one of the best in the country, has been thrown to only one time. Herman Archie, on the other hand, they've thrown the ball at him quite a few times without success. The ball was thrown late by last finger. Archie was open momentarily, but Powell, number nine, the defensive quarterback, came back and deflected the pass. So that opening flurry by Georgia getting the ball over on the Auburn side of the field to start the second half is turned away by the Auburn defense, which has been dominant so far in the ball game, forcing the punt by Chip Andrews. It's a tail dragger, and it goes into the end zone. He was trying to roll it out of bounds in the corner. Couldn't do it. Auburn will come out first down at the 20 after a 44-yard punt. Calvin Ruff is a freshman, a red shirt. Out of Eaton's on that defensive end, Donald Chumley's a big tackle at 240 from Savannah. Mike Weaver, the nose guard, 280. And uh, Kenneth Sims, 245. A tackle with Freddie Gilbert, an All-American, All-Conference, 250. Scott Culpepper, the leading tackler on the team at linebacker, and Tommy Thurston, 235, the senior linebacker. And his first down now is Randy Campbell. It's had quite a day for the Auburn Tigers. 
He sets them up first down at their 20 with that wishbone offense. One of four teams in the country still using it. And the ball goes to Lionel James. Makes a good cut back into the traffic and picks up five yards. The Georgia defensive secondary, Darrell Jones, a senior at one corner. Tony Flack is a sophomore at the other corner. Flack has been hurt once in the first half, but coming back. Harry Hogue is a consensus All-American playing Rover. And uh, Charlie Dean is the free safety at number 18. So it's second down and five for Auburn. The Plainsmen have controlled the ball game to this point. Have made no real serious mistakes in the ball game so far. Campbell getting pressure. Knox Culpepper is got it. Back at the 21. Culpepper likes the blitz. Makes the big play. He reads the play as a pass. He's coming. Campbell, the quarterback, is trying to scramble, and this is the first time that the Auburn quarterback has been tackled for a loss in over 26 quarters. Culpepper makes a great effort. He stays relentlessly after the quarterback. There he makes the play. Big, big play for the Georgia Bulldogs, and they needed it desperately. It'll be third down. About eight from near the 22. Belly it off to the fullback. Tommy A.G., who had the 219-yard game against Maryland last week. A.G. gets almost nothing out of it, and it brings up fourth down. So the Georgia defensive unit, which has played very well, does its job. And Auburn now will have to kick it away. Auburn punter is in the ball game. Lewis Colbert has had two kicks so far, a 42 and 50 yards. Averaging 42 yards on the season. Gary Moss is deep for Georgia. No pressure on Colbert. Good high-hanging kick, and Moss has to call fair catch and does. But Georgia has good field position now. They have the football first down up at the 42 after a 35-yard punt by Colbert. Georgia having run off 23 consecutive conference wins. Last team to beat them was Auburn. And the Tigers with one conference game to play Alabama December 3rd trying to grab this one leading 13-0. Last thing a little play action now swings it back to Sean Jackson. Set up a screen for him. Nothing doing. Number 42, Jeff Jackson. Jackson, big senior out of Griffin. Yep. Taking a look at the Southeastern Conference standing. Alabama won today, so the Crimson Tide four and one with a December 3rd game against Auburn. If Georgia should win this football game, they would clinch the conference championship because they would have concluded their conference schedule having only Georgia Tech left to play. But if Auburn wins, we'll go down to that Alabama game. There's a penalty flag. It's going to be against Georgia because the referee pulled it out of his pocket. But Auburn may decline it because they have run Ron Jackson down behind the line of scrimmage from safety Tommy Powell. Out of Greenville, Alabama, a freshman coming up to make the play. So the Auburn defense, Frank, it just isn't giving them anything. They're just shutting the door on them. The, Georgia, the Auburn defense is so big physically that the Georgia team cannot run against them, and so they're going to more of a play action and short passing game. Illegal motion. Offense. Decline. George Hassel, the offensive coordinator, told me that might be the possibility that Auburn would be so strong that they'd have to change character, depart from what they've done best all year, and try to open up their passing attack. That seems to be the case right now. It is third down. The ball is sitting on the Georgia 37. They need 16 yards to keep it. Last finger on a deep drop. Goes deep downfield with it. He's got Harris out there, and Harris has got it. Made the catch between two defenders, but there is a penalty flag thrown back up at the line of scrimmage. That thing is going to make a beautiful throw. Harris is in behind the safety. He lays it up, lets him run under the ball, but Georgia is called for holding or illegal use of the hand. The play comes Watch back. Watch the pattern that Harris runs. Auburn defensive backs are known to play very tight and they're vulnerable in behind them. You can see that Harris runs right behind Warren, number 45, and behind Beasley, the safety man, number 31. Tough break for Georgia. Illegal use of hands, offense. 
Well, again, the penalties hurt Georgia. Mistakes in uh, the fumble and penalties have played a major part in Auburn's lead so far. It is third down now and 21. Last thing I have, good protection, gets it out to Tron Jackson, but there are two Tigers waiting for him at the 39. The first one was Greg Carr, who leads the team in tackles, and that'll bring in the punter, Chip Andrews, on fourth down. When you got mobile linebackers like Carr and Jackson, both run 4-6 and 4-7, you don't worry about those short passes because you can come up and see them first and come up and make the tackle for short game. Chip Andrews about to hit his seventh punt of the ball game, and when you punted seven times uh, in the middle of the third quarter, your offense hasn't been doing a whole lot. Auburn drops off, leaving eight men up front. I just hit by Andrews. Trey Gaines called a fair catch. He did it back at his 11, but had he not made the fair catch, Georgia had a chance to kill it deep. That was a 49-yard punt, and we've got a timeout. Number 14, Auburn quarterback Randy Campbell, very efficient. Here's what his coach said about him yesterday. I think that, uh, you know, if we could pull this thing off, then Randy Campbell's story would have to be one of the fairy tales of all time in college football. What he has, what he has done with his college career just out of sheer determination and guts and class and integrity and, and working and I mean he has he has drained himself of everything that he's got to put on where it is today. He's six feet tall, he weighs 165 pounds, he probably has no chance at a pro career, but he's got a great senior season for the Auburn Tigers. And he sets him up now, first down, they put it at the 12 of Auburn. Tigers are leading 13 to nothing here in the third quarter of play. That's Bo Jackson bolting to about the 16. Keep going back to Pat Dye. I closed my eyes and listened, and I thought it was Bear Bryant talking. Of course, Pat coached for Bear for so long. He is uh, a lot like him in many ways. Many, many ways. That ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. It's <laughs> right. Second down and call it five and a half. down the right side a little train Lionel James hemmed in cuts it back breaks it out still going first down Auburn out at the 34 the Georgia defense played it perfectly James was should have been tackled or could have been tackled behind the line of scrimmage you cannot play the option any better than Georgia plays it but you have to make the tackle as Vince Dooley said they haven't been tackling good well, a lot of it is because of this young man right here. He's probably the most elusive ball carrier in the Southeastern Conference. Only 5'7", 170 pounds. Not much speed, but he's hard to tackle. And it's a first down. Ball is at the Auburn 34. Working the triple option to perfection. Just once they get in traffic, it's up to them, and Jackson and James have done a heck of a job, and this time it's easy carrying. Lionel James has now passed 2,000 yards, Frank. He's got 2,008. He is Auburn's third all-time running back behind Joe Cribbs and James Brooks, and that's pretty flashy company. That is fast company indeed, and he must be the smallest back in a many, many years in the southeast, at least, that has had over 2,000 yards. You look back over Auburn's history, and they have had great running backs year after year after year. Go back as far as you want, and they've had great running backs. It is second down and seven. And Campbell options it down the line and keeps it to the 40. They'll be looking at third down and five. Here's an example of the Auburn running backs that are playing in the NFL. We recognize those names as outstanding ball carriers, and that's just ones in recent years that Keith mentioned. They go way, way back. One of the great upsets in this uh, colorful series that started in 1892 and 42 when a fellow named Monk Gafford cut him up. The only Georgia loss of that year. They went on and won the road ball game against UCLA. Third down and five from the 40 as Campbell can quickly goes with a wide out pattern to 
Chris Wood, number one, a senior from Birmingham. Wood pulls it down. There's the penalty flag thrown. A late call. It seemed like that uh, as we watched the, the pattern, Wood has excellent speed. Georgia secondary is giving him a good cushion, even though it's third and short yardage. I believe I'd be up playing him a little tighter than that on third and short yardage. But uh, it's going for Dawn. I believe that Auburn is going to be penalized. They're backing up. Talking to Tommy Thurston, senior linebacker. Auburn's uh, time of possession is growing enormously. The defense has dominated the ball game for the Tigers. The offense has made very few mistakes. In fact, no mistakes really that have hurt them. Here's your call from referee Dick Burrow. Holden, offense, defeat third down. One thing, as we mentioned earlier, for those of that joined the slate, both of these coaches stress the running game, strong defense, and a good kicking game, and throw only when the other team overplays the run, sacrificing pass coverage. Two outstanding coaches, good position right here in these, both of these schools. It is third down and 15 for the Tigers from their 30. And Campbell straight back. Throws it short to Bo Jackson. James Hackle. And down he goes at the 38, short of the first down. Here is Tim Brandt. Keith All-American Rover Terry Hogue has taken himself out of the ballgame for Georgia defensively. His ankle is pain in him, something awful. You know, he hurt this ankle against Temple two weeks ago, did not practice this week. Tried to go in the first half, played fairly well, but now it is really hurting him. He's taken himself out of the ballgame. That puts Cantrell in in his place as the rover back to Cantrell having played very well last week in their 10-9 win over Florida. The punt by Colbert is fourth of the day. Pressure, and they almost got it. Almost blocked, but he got it away, and a fair catch is called up at the 32 by Gary Moss. It was Henry Harris, number 52, the freshman, who almost blocked it. 4.30 to go in the third quarter. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter here in Athens with Auburn leading 13 to nothing. Georgia with its ninth possession. The previous eight have ended in seven punts and a fumble. Just short of their 33. Left finger, the quarterback option down the line, turns it inside, and he is dropped right about the line of scrimmage. Ben Thomas, a big junior from Ashburn, Georgia, made the tackle for Auburn. Another one of the factors in this ball game is Pat Dye, the Auburn coach was an All-American guard at Georgia, while Vince Dooley, the Georgia coach, was a quarterback at Auburn. And it was Guy in 1959 who recovered a fumble that sealed a Georgia win over Auburn. So the familial relationships are deeply intertwined between these two schools. Last finger's pass on the money as a penalty flag thrown as David King came up and hit Herman Archie. And apparently they're going to call it that he got there a little too soon. Well, the rule says that the defensive man cannot touch the offensive receiver until the offensive receiver has had a chance to touch the ball. You be the judge. King, number 27, is going to be coming right over the back of Archer, number 81. Two shoots. Okay. Defense, first down. Very, very close call. If his right shoulder, if his right shoulder does, in fact, hit Archer's right shoulder, right there, very close play. King was very upset with the call. Tough call. Judgment call. So many judgments that a man has to make out there officiating a game. Here's Last Singer. Whips it over to Kevin Harris. Wide out screen. It works for a first down for Georgia. Down to the Auburn 42. Greg Carr made the tackle. Watch the work of uh, Greg Carr, who is a member of the Honor Society. Fine student at Auburn. Watch him fire and blitz. But he doesn't give up. Good defensive football players never give up. They always pursue while the ball is being in the air and on the ground. And a great play by Carr, saving for a possible touchdown. At the Auburn 42, first down Georgia. This one of the more impressive uh, offensive efforts by Georgia so far in the ball game. This game by the fullback, uh, Barry Young, is good down to about the 37. Georgia had been averaging about uh, 1.9 for of a rush. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football coming up Monday night. We'll get to see Eric Dickerson, the Rams rookie running back, who's been a sensation. The Rams co-leaders in the Western Division with San Francisco and New Orleans. Atlanta coming along, though. They've moved their record up to four and six. Nine Eastern time on Monday. Second down, four and a half for Georgia. 
on the Auburn side of the field. Here's the pitch going back to Keith Montgomery, the tailback, and he's got a yard. That's all. The Georgia offensive front, one of the best in the country. I don't think there's any question about that. But the defensive effort by the Auburn people today, and particularly their big guys in the down position, Smith, Auckland, and Humphrey, have just been a sight. Humphrey number 79. Watch him fight off the block. He uses his hands. That's the mark of a good defensive lineman. He keeps his feet free. Then he recognizes where the ball is and escapes from the block and assists in the tackle. Humphrey made all Southeastern Conference in 1981. It is third down and three for Georgia. Outside, Montgomery will not get it. And now Vince Dooley's got to make a decision. He will go for it on fourth down. He has no choice. He's threatening. He's got a little momentum. But the Auburn defense, Chief, the reason they're doing so, being so effective with it is that Georgia has not been predicted unpredictable with their with their offense. They've been stereotyped running the ball most of the time. They went to the boundary side of the field that time. Trying to get enough clogging over there and open a track for Montgomery and it just simply wasn't available. Alvin will bunch inside and force them to go wide if they make it. That's Scott Williams in motion. Here comes last singer. No, nothing to it. Nothing doing. Last finger never had a chance to execute the option as the Auburn defensive people just simply overran them. Big Doug Smith, 6'6", 275 from Bayboro, North Carolina. And Auburn has the football first down at their own 35. You've got a minute and 29 seconds to play in the third quarter. Georgia has had a history with this particular senior class of players. Pull them out late if they had to. They went 99 yards to beat Florida last week in the fourth quarter. But they're in against a different critter, I think, today in these Tigers. Look at that. See that Campbell hold that ball for the last second, turn it loose as he was going down. Took a solid lick from Andy Lloyd, but he got the ball to Lionel James, and James has got a first down. Nebraska rolling Kansas, 47 to nothing. Lionel James now with nine carries and 75 yards in the game. Texas had to come from behind, trailing 14-3 at halftime to pull that out. And the Fighting Illini are headed for the Rose Bowl. That win today locked it. BYU is winning, continuing to win. Lavelle Edwards' team out in the Rocky Mountain country. From the 47-yard line, here comes Bo Jackson up to midfield. Top three yards. Donald Cumbley, junior from Savannah, brought him down. Alabama. Uh, beating Southern Miss, 28-16. Alabama's got to go up and play Boston College yet. And then they play uh, Auburn on December 3rd, a game that we'll have for you here on ABC. If Auburn continues to hold its lead and wins today, and if they can handle Alabama and Birmingham, they're on their way to New Orleans. In the Sugar Bowl, their second conference championship. Last time they won it was 1957. Only time they won it. Second down and seven, Campbell runs that belly through. Keeps the football, the ball is loose, and he rolled over on top of it and regained it as Freddie Gilbert had a hold of it. Oh. Freddie Gilbert, number 90, has to make some big plays if George is going to win. He's been that big playmaker. He's crashed into the inside, gets blocked momentarily, but he has the ability to fight outside, and he makes a leaping dive and knocks the ball out and it rolls right back. Campbell's alertness recovers it for Auburn. And the third quarter is over with Auburn leading 13 nothing. We'll be back after this commercial message and the word from our local station. We go to the final 15 minutes of this 87th meeting between Auburn and Georgia. The Tigers have the ball at their own 46, third down and 12. Leading 13 to nothing. And Campbell back. Throws it short. And it is caught at the Georgia 49 by Ed West, the tight end. And he took a lick from Gary Cantrell, but he hung on. West is going to be costing the uh, in front of the linebackers. Campbell just holds the ball until he gets open, but it's such a short game. Georgia's Defensive people, Campbell in particular, make a fine play and stop him short in first down. And in comes Lewis Colbert to kick. Gary Moss is deep for Georgia. Fifth punt of the day for Auburn. What of a knuckleball downfield. Moss trying with it. 
Finds a little room, comes across the 20, after the 23. Third quarter statistics. George Auburn's defense continues to dominate the game. The amazing thing is strikes out total yards for Georgia, 85 yards. They've been rushing for 250 yards a game. They've rushed for 46, giving Auburn plenty of opportunities to use their offense, and they lead 13 to nothing. Georgia averaging two and a half yards on first down play. That will not get you a win. Here's Lessinger on a roll, bootlegging, coming outside, and hit from behind and brought down by Jim Bone, number 51, a junior from Columbus. Here's the story on the Georgia possession. This just shows once again what field position would do. Auburn has moving the ball enough to start Georgia way back, as you can see, and Georgia not being able to do anything with the Auburn defense. Second down, seven. Last finger goes the other way to throw it. Ball is deflected by number 93, Quincy Williams. Big Quincy, 6'3", 215, a senior from Douglasville, Georgia, playing at Auburn. Reached up, left it down. Georgia's offense is, is, particularly in their passing offense, is not a sophisticated type. They, they live by the, the run. Their passing is not fancy. When they get behind, they normally get into trouble. Well, they are in trouble right now with 13 and a half minutes to play in this football game. Third down and seven for the Bulldogs. Last finger under pressure. Gets his pass away, and it is incomplete. Intended for Kevin Harris, overthrown in a penalty flag. It's back up around the line of scrimmage on the far side of the field. The penalty against Georgia. Somebody started too soon. Will be declined. Bring up fourth down and seven, and Georgia will have to kick it away. Harris, number 20, uh, doesn't have that blazing speed, but he runs precise routes. As you see, he gets open momentarily, but the ball is high. Warren, number 45, was carried. Arch is a man who goes in motion. He jumps the count momentarily, but once he gets started, he has to stay set for one full second, and he did the eighth Georgia punt. Good. Craig Gaines, fair catch at the 34. So the Tigers will have good field position. They're on 34 after the 40-yard punt, leading by 13. With 13-21 to play in the football game, Auburn now figures to stay on the ground and just challenge Georgia. Keep the ball up. Georgia's got to make something happen by taking chances. Something dramatic. Inside Lionel James on a little counter. And he moves it from the 34 out to the 40. Looked like for a moment that uh, James was going to make a long run. The hole opened up, but Georgia defense what, uh, reacted very beautifully and recovered and made the tackle. That's Todd Williams warming up on the sidelines. He came on in relief of Last Singer. Back in the second quarter. Last finger just hasn't been able to make anything happen. Second down, four. James out. Allen Evans, number 33, in replacing him. Campbell stands up. Quick release to the sideline. Chris Wood gets the first down for Auburn on the Georgia side of the field. Near the 45. Tony Flack making the play. He had given him a lot of cushions. When you have an experienced quarterback like Campbell, you look up and you see the Georgia quarterback giving a 10-yard cushion. You change the play. You tell Woods to go out and catch the ball and make the first down. It's the easy way to do it. You don't see the Georgia defensive back flat come into the play until Woods had turned out and made extra yardage. Campbell now 10 out of 13, 79. He's hit seven in a row. Bo Jackson. Did he fumble? Georgia says yes. The officials don't. Well, Auburn fumbling, uh, preventing the fumbles is something outstanding on the wishbone. Let's watch it again. This is a pitch sweep. Jackson's favorite play. Scored twice against Florida on this one play. He cuts back. 
Once his shoulder or any part of his body touches the ground other than his legs or his hands, while he's in possession of the ball, it's a dead ball. And I believe that's what happened, Keith. He was on the ground when the ball popped out. Second down seven, ball up to Georgia 41. Jackson hammers over the left side, big 226 pounder. And he's close to a first down at the Georgia 35. Oh, he's strong. Georgia Tech beating Wake Forest today. And the Penn State scored in the last seconds of that ball game to beat Notre Dame 34 to 30. Big day for Kenny Jackson and a big day for Alan Pinkett. And Syracuse in the Dome beat Boston College 21 to 10. Jack McNell is worried about that game for weeks. Syracuse, sure enough, he was right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keith, Syracuse has had a good football team. They've played everybody close. Third down, and knee the foot. They call on Lionel James to get it. And the spot they give him is over the 35, and that will be good for the first down. Ten minutes and 39 seconds to play in the football game. Jackson now has carried 14 times for 104 yards. James has carried 10 times for 81 yards. Georgia would like to get a fumble, but Auburn last year in 12 games only lost the ball turnovers 14 times. This year, they've turned the ball in nine games over 14 times also, only 28 in two years. Remarkable, remarkable achievement. Ride it off to Agee, the fullback. Campbell keeps it, and Campbell runs it for the sidelines, and he picks up close to eight yards on the carry. Georgia's captain, Tommy Thurston, had Campbell for no gain, but uh, Campbell just faked him. Thurston went to the ground. Campbell picked up the good yardage. He couldn't play them, play any better. All Thurston had to do was make the tackle, and he couldn't do it. Here's the offensive backfield of Auburn. You can see how they share their responsibilities, the carries, the yardage, and the wishbone. That is what we are accustomed to seeing. Knox Culpepper right now in the ball game, the leading tackler for Georgia. Came in with 116. He's added 17 today. That's Bo Jackson cutting it up the middle and getting down to about the 21. For another Auburn first down, Gary Cantrell, the junior from Atlanta, brought him down. Cantrell playing the rover spot in replace in place of the injured Perry Hogue. The play starts to the right. It comes back to Auburn's left. Georgia defense are pursuing very quickly, trying to stop the play. It's an excellent call, something that is good, particularly in the fourth quarter, when Georgia is trying to get the ball away from it. The ball is, well, it's actually closer to the 22. Off to A.G., the fullback. The offensive line surge escorts him for about three yards. If we look at this, Dooley had a fantastic career here at Georgia. Yeah, but he's got a grim look on his face, what Frank, because he, if he heard these numbers, Auburn has run the ball for 260 yards today, Georgia for 49. Georgia had only given up 104 yards average per game in the first nine games. Here's Pat Dye. Turn the Auburn program around. Second down and six for Auburn. At the Georgia 18, Campbell throws it up. Ball is popped up in the air and caught by an Auburn man, Bo Jackson. And Jackson takes it to the 15. Very alert, Bo Jackson, who was faking off. Georgia defensive people are going to jump up and knock the little quick pass down. Campbell is going to try to throw quickly. Georgia looks like, uh, yes, it's Gilbert who deflected the ball, but Jackson sees it coming back towards him, and he runs up, catches it, and makes a couple of yards. Number 34, Bo Jackson. Well, you got to call it a completion, don't you? Yes, you do. Eight in a row. <laughs> Third down and four. James. They hit him behind the line of scrimmage, Tommy Thurston. But Thurston could only get one arm on him, and he couldn't hold it. And he runs it down to about the 13. He's a yard short of his first down. It brings up fourth down. He's actually two yards short of it. And in comes Al Del Greco, who has kicked two field goals already. He puts his tee down at the 20. He has uh, now moved 
into the lead as Auburn's all-time leading scorer and all-time uh, career kicking leader. Well, Mike Mann holds it. Del Greco nails it, but he hooks it. He had it way up in the air and into the crowd, but he hooks it out of the upright. So he misses from 30 yards with 7.02 to play in the football game. To the football throughout this game. Georgia first down with Todd Williams in its quarterback now, replacing last singer, puts it up, it is deflected, it is intercepted by Jeff Jackson, the linebacker. Ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage that took all of the zip out of it, and it fell right into the arms of Jeff Jackson. Well, Georgia has to go to the passing game, but they go to a play-action pass. It doesn't fool Auburn at all. The linebackers did not take the fake. They're right in the line of bow of the pass. It's deflected there, and Jackson, number 42, who was an outside linebacker last year, moved to the inside and made a fine, fine interception. And Auburn is in business now, looking for the door slammer on the Georgia 34. First down for the Tigers. Inside goes Bo Jackson. Campbell and the fullback, A.G., worked so close to the line of scrimmage, don't they? Keith, that's the, that's the strength of the wishbone. When the fullback hits right up behind the guard, the quarterback puts his, the ball in his uh, stomach. The defense reacts to it, and that is what makes the outside play so potent as we look at Jeff Jackson, who just made that interception. Gain with two yards. It is second down and eight. That's Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator for Georgia in the dark shirt there. Second and eight, Campbell goes to the air with it, hits Buford, and Buford runs it inside the 20, fights his way on down to about the 17, and an Auburn first down. Darrell Jones, the tackle. Pat Dye told me that uh, he let Campbell change the play at the line of scrimmage any time that he sees something that might work. Once again, Georgia's cornerback playing very deep, very soft, gave too much cushion to the Auburn receiver, Buford. There's the score by quarters. Call it the 18 for the market. And the first down for the Tigers. 5.54 to play in the game. Clock running. He's checked it again. Rides it off to his fullback. Fishes wide to Jackson. And Georgia cuts him down. Coming across Charlie Dean with a rolling block. Taking the feet from under Jackson. Here's exactly what Pat Dye predicted for the ball game. Randy Campbell is a winner. He has those intangibles, and he had a great game today, 12 out of 15 for 95 yards. Last eight in a row. Is it nine in a row? Nine in a row, yes. Ball just short of the 15. Second down, short eight, long seven. Jackson again, dives in there. The Georgia, yards. the Georgia defense continues to, to fight valiantly. They've been put in very difficult positions by the Georgia offense in effectiveness. Hard to stay out on the field for the whole ball game and stop a team like Auburn that has the back that uh, a breakaway threat on any down. From the 13, third down and five for the Tigers. Lionel James into the stack right about the line of scrimmage. Just setting up the field goal. If they didn't make the first down, putting the ball directly in front of the goal post. Del Greco comes in. El missed from 30 a few minutes ago. And they let the clock tick along, using all the time they can. They got a pretty good break, because that 25-second uh, clock didn't reset for about three seconds. <laughs> this will be another 30-yard try. He hit from 20, hit from 41, and missed from 30 today. He hooked that one out, too. His last two kicks have been hooked left to the upright. And so Auburn 
in that particular possession succeeded only in using up about a minute and 40 seconds of time. The football is sitting at the 20 for Georgia. John Lastinger has come back. Vince Dooley has been rotating his quarterbacks now, trying to find some lightning in the arm of one or the other. 3.35 to play in the ball game. Lastinger, very quickly, Kevin Harris dives for the marker and looks to have it across the 30 for a Bulldog first down. Georgia has to rely on desperation passes now. Just go to the air virtually every down. Auburn will be playing for this, mixing up some rushing, but mostly defended and conceding the short throws. Gets away from the pressure quickly to Archie, puts him out there. He was one on one for a while, but then it suddenly became four on one, and uh, good night, Herman. Looking through the book, the last time you find Georgia having been shut out was uh, 1979, Virginia. Deep. 31 to nothing in that particular inning. But Auburn just may do it today with only 3.03 to play in the ball game. The soft with 3.03 to play in the football game and a 13-point Auburn lead. It is second down and 10 for the Georgia Bulldogs at their own 30. We talked earlier about the defensive front of Auburn. I was interested to read back that uh, their, their slogan was the roadway to the Sugar Bowl started with those defensive front four. Look pretty good today. Certainly do. That's Archie going in motion. And last thing, steps out of the pressure, gets his pass away. Pass is caught up across the 45, and they're going to call him down at the 47. Fred Lane, a freshman from Decatur, when he took the hit, the ball popped loose, but they called him down. Lane is the fastest of the Georgia receivers. He's going to get open, and he finds himself right between the linebackers, and last thing will make the good throw. Now, the rule is that once his body touches the ground, the ball is dead if he has possession of it, and he did. Jeff Jackson that nailed it. First down, Bulldogs, they're 47. Two and a half minutes to play the pass intended for Kevin Harris is incomplete. Auburn in this circumstance will just drop back. The linebackers lined up five yards deep, the cornerback 12, the safety man about 25 yards deep. Concede Georgia the short pass, make the tackle the minute they catch the ball if they do complete it. Auburn's only stumbled this year, lost to Texas in the second game by a score of 20 to 7. They were down 20 to nothing at halftime in that ballgame. Last thing they're dropping back the throw. Goes to the sideline. Pass incomplete. Bounced in front of the intended receiver, Kevin Harris. Teams that run the football, live by the run, have a difficult time playing catch-up football. But Vince Dooley's team. This particular senior class has won 41 games, lost three, and tied one without having a sophisticated pass attack. But they're behind two touchdowns virtually now, and they're in trouble. Two and a half minutes exactly to play in the game. It is third down and 10 for Georgia from their own 47. Sideline pattern, tumbles out of bounds, catching the ball. It is Fred Lane, and it's a first down for Georgia on the Auburn side of the field. Good. Auburn backing up now, playing some uh, defense. Good, good, excuse me, Keith, a good throw by last finger. Lane is going to get on the boundary so that if he catches the pass, he can step right out of bounds and stop the clock. He has one foot in bounds while he has control of the ball. Auburn dropping the cover. You're able to pick up that 13, 10 to 15 yard zone. Normally pretty well when the team's playing off the ball. Here's last finger's pass down the middle. Lane is wide open. And Lane is brought down inside the 15 at the 13. If he hadn't lost his balance, he might have scored. 
That is the deepest penetration by Georgia all day. The, the blitz. Watch on the left. You see the blitz coming, but last finger stepped up and hit Blaine right in the middle, which is the weak part of the defense. The line, the strong safety Powell, number nine, was beaten on the play. Blaine makes the big catch and gives Georgia a chance. With 2.16 to play. Here's Lane. The He's being covered man for man by number nine. Number nine, Powell, starting for the first time this year, is beaten on the play very badly. The ball is laid up right perfectly for the catch. Lane tries to dodge Warren, but couldn't do it. He that was the first time that Auburn has tried to rush Georgia in this circumstance. They got caught beat man on man. I don't think they will do it again. No, I don't believe they will. Those are the games that are set for the future. Army-Navy on Friday, the 25th, day after Thanksgiving in the Rose Bowl, Pasadena. Then on November 26th, we'll have Texas and Texas A&M, and the Aggies are getting their act together. It won't be an easy trip for the Horns to Aggie land. And then Saturday, December 3rd, 3.30 Eastern Time, Auburn and Alabama. And a Sugar Bowl trip to Auburn on the line. If Georgia can score here and get the onside kick, Kick the X to both extra points, they could win this ball game. Got to score the first one first. Last finger to the corner, he's got a man, touchdown! Herman Archie. Number 81 is going to go inside and back to the corner. We call it a flag route. Number nine, Powell, a mismatch. He's a strong safety. He's beaten on the play. He cannot defend. The ball is thrown high. Archer 6 5. And Height pulls it in for the touchdown. Kevin Butler for the extra point try. Jimmy Harrell holds it. Brad Angley snaps it. And the kick is good. So you've got two minutes and 11 seconds to play in the football game. Auburn's lead now is cut to six. Thirteen to seven, Auburn. Two eleven to play in the game. And the fellow on the sidelines who's got to have wet foams right now is Al Del Greco, who missed two 30-yard field goals. And Keith Kevin. Auburn's got 12 men on the field. They've got 12 men. They sure do. But two, four, five, seven, ten, eleven. No, they just got. Uh, they got one of them. All. There's your onside kick. Bob it around. George has got it at the 45. Great job to Golden Glory. I'll tell you. David Painter comes up with the ball. Kevin Butler is an expert. I was going to tell you that before the kick. I didn't get a chance. He's an expert at making the ball bounce up in the air after it hits the ground to give his players a catch. Watch Butler roll the ball, hit it right over the top. It goes way up in the air. Auburn comes out. They're tied in, number 82. Park tries to get it. He misses it. Painter came out of there with it. It's Georgia's ball, first down at their own 46. Now the Auburn defense digs in. They pretty well control Georgia all day, and they miss the sack, but they finally get it. Number 93, Quincy Williams, was really on a roll there. John Daly missed him, and that's Painter who recovered the onside kick. But Georgia's quarterback, Lastinger, is decked back at the 42. So once again, the Auburn defensive unit makes a big play. Second down, 14. Lastinger back. Has better protection this time. His pass is away short for Tron Jackson and out of bounds he goes. He picked up about two yards on the play. Auburn, in the last two weeks, has faced two outstanding passes in Wayne Peace uh, and Eosasen from Maryland giving up over 300 yards to both of them. So the Auburn secondary can be burned. Yes, they can. You can see that. But Georgia doesn't have the passing game to do it. At least they haven't had to this point with a minute and 37 seconds to play in the game. 137. 
13-7, Auburn. Georgia with the ball, third down and 13. Lastinger getting pressure, gets it off to Fred Lane. He's out there with two people, no place to go. Greg Carr locks him at the 39, and Georgia is backing up now, losing on that play. And Paul's timeout with 1.29 to play. As we look at Pat Ty, who had this football game as seemingly won, and now he's threatening, Georgia is threatening what's going through his mind. He's trying to keep his poise. He's trying to get his defense lined up properly, not to be rattled, trying to calm them down and play what they do best. He's got to keep his poise. He cannot be thinking about the national championship, a possibility, the Sugar Bowl, or whatever. He's got to get his defense settled down so that they can play their best effort on these last He's in pretty good seven. shape, Frank. He's looking at, uh, Georgia's looking at fourth down and 16. They have no timeout remaining and a minute and 29 seconds to play in the game. I like Auburn defense. Auburn defense is, has really risen to the occasion, as we say in football. You get your back to the wall, and they came out and they stopped Georgia with a sack and uh, two very short passes, losing a few yards. Georgia will have to go deep down to the intermediate route. They've got to go 16 yards. Last singer has it over the middle, and it is almost intercepted. Almost picked off. Batted down by Jimmy Warren, and Auburn takes over Georgia now with no timeouts remaining and a minute 23 to play in the football game. Auburn can take 25 seconds to put each play be put each uh, down into play and therefore they will not have to punt the ball and give it up to Georgia. They'll just fall on it. Well, it was the kind of a football game that I think everybody expected, right? I, I agree with you, Keith. And when you look at Pat Dye, I asked Pat, what are the winning things, uh, the keys to winning? Bat win the battle of turnovers, win the battle of penalties, the kicking game, and conversion downs. And Auburn has done that. All right, that gets the clock rolling. And it'll just keep on rolling because Georgia has no timeouts to kill it. And Keith will be in Birmingham when Auburn lines up against Alabama. The biggest win in Pat Dye's career at Auburn, this being his third year there, was his 23-22 win over Alabama last year. This will be the next big win for the Auburn program. The Prudential College School Board coming up in just 50 seconds. Clock continuing to run. Here's the second snap. They'll have to snap it one more time. Randy Campbell. Big day for Campbell. All week long, Frank, I felt that Campbell would be the man, and he turned out to be exactly that. He is Auburn's most valuable player. Georgia's most valuable player is Knox Culpepper, who had 20 tackles, now has 136 on the season. Campbell, 12 out of 15, 95 yards, hit nine in a row. He ran for 35 yards on 15 carries. So the respective universities of Georgia and Auburn will receive in the names of their NBC $1,000 from Chevrolet for their general academic scholarship fund. And as the clock ticks away, the Auburn fans run onto the field to join the football team as Auburn has defeated Georgia by a score of 13 to 7. Tough day in Athens. It's been a long time since the home folks saw their football team lose a game between the hedges. The last team to do it was 1979. That team was over. And here are the Tigers, pesky as ever, doing it again. Young Pat Dye is going to be a giant in this profession. He loves Auburn, as I said earlier, and Auburn people love him. And there's the, one of the great statesmen coaches in our profession, Vince Dooley. What we just witnessed was a great effort by Randy Campbell, the quarterback for Auburn. Sensational performance. So the Tigers will take a couple of weeks off before they play their final game against the Crimson Tide in Birmingham December 3rd. 
Coming up next, the potential college scoreboard. Potential will have the rundown for you of all the games around the country, and there have been some surprises. And here in Athens, Auburn defeats Georgia by a score of 13 to 7. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arlen. Today's coverage of the Auburn-Georgia game, produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director, John Allen, associate director, Garland Pete. This is Keith Jackson, along with Frank Royals and Tim Brandt. Our stats for Dave Bernson, and our spotter was Todd Berry. Prudential College School Board, in just a moment. NCAA College Football, brought to you by New Gillette Foamy Gel, with more lubricants for the closeness and comfort you want in a shave. By Canon, Canon proud to be the official 35-millimeter camera of the 1984 Olympics. And by Mr. Goodrich and General Motors Park. Yes, indeed. The party's on at Truman's Corner as Auburn wins by six. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the official airlines of the 1984 Olympic Games.